Welcome to our lecture online. If you had seen the previous video, you realize not a lot has changed here, except we didn't finish it over here like we did before. What we're going to do here is instead of stopping in this form, which is called the row echelon form, we have ones across the diagonal and zeros to the bottom left of that, we're also going to turn these three into zeros as well. That's called the reduced row echelon form. And then we can just simply read x, y, and z to the right of that vertical line. So the next thing we want to do is to get rid of this right here and turn that into a zero. We're going to do that by taking the second row, which is, oh, not the second row, the first row, first row, and replace it by the negative of this number, which is the positive one, times the row with the one in it, which is row two. So we get one times row two and add it to row one. When we do that, we'll turn that into a zero. All right, so that means we're going to rewrite the matrix. And the second and third row don't change, so this is 0, 1, 3, and 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1. But on the first row, this remains a 1. Ne uh, a pause, let's see, where are we here? Oh, here we are. 1 times R2, so 1 times 1 added to this gives me 0. 1 times 3 added to 0 gives me 3. 1 times 1 added to negative 1 gives me a pause. Oh, wait a minute. 1 times 1 added to negative 1 gives me 0. So this is a 3, and this becomes a 0. Of course, we're not done yet, because now we want to get rid of these two, since this is already a 1. We want 1s across the diagonal, but now we want to get rid of these two numbers, this 3 and this 3. That means we're going to take the first row and replace it by negative 3 times the row with the 1 in, which is row 3. Oh, that's a terrible 3 add it to row 1. And we're going to take the second row and replace it by the negative of that number, which is negative 3 again, times the row with the 1 in it, which is row 3, and add it to row 2. So we're basically doing the same thing with row 1 and row 2. When we do that, we get the following result. Notice that row 3 doesn't change. We get 0, 0, 1, and 1. Row 1, negative 3 times 1 added to 3, so we get negative 3 plus 3 gives me 0. Of course, the 1 is 0, and 0, 1 doesn't change, but this becomes 0. And negative 3 times this, that's negative 3 added to 0 gives me negative 3. For the second row, we take negative 3 times 1, that's negative 3 added to 3 gives me 0. And negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 added to 1 gives me a negative 2. And now notice, we have 1's across the diagonal and 0's everywhere else which means that this is our x, our y, and our z columns. So here we can see that 1 times x is equal to 3, or negative 3. We have 1 times y is negative 2, and 1 times z is equal to 1. And notice how wonderful that works. Once you get it all the way down to the reduced row echelon form with ones across diagonals and zeros everywhere else, you simply can read x, y, and z in terms of negative 3, negative 2, and 1. And that is how it's done using the reduced row echelon form. I really like this method. <laughs> it's so slick though, at the end you can just simply read off the values for x, y, and z. Assuming, of course, you, did, you went through it very, very carefully and you did not make a single yeah, mistake. Yeah, then when you start doing fractions in there and have to find... It can get, it can get messy. You have to find the common denominator and all this wonderful stuff. Yes, it can indeed get messy if the numbers aren't pretty like these.